Hey everybody, I'm Michelle and in this video I'm going to talk about the books that I read in June. So I think I should just start with saying that June overall was a bit of a disappointing reading month. Not necessarily because of how many books I read, because I read six in total, which is great. But more in that a lot of the books were very disappointing. I didn't even realize it until I was making my wrap up list and I looked back at all my ratings and everything that I've read and I was like, no. Most of them just weren't all that great. So I feel like I'm already setting the tone for a fun and exciting video by this. But it is the truth. And sometimes I feel like you guys love to hear me rant about certain books. So I guess that is what's going to happen in this video. Because overall I haven't read a lot of amazing books this month. And not necessarily that they were like horrible or really really bad. But overall just very mediocre and disappointing. So yeah, not the best reading month, but I think I'm just going to get started and tell you all about the books that I read in June. The first book that I read was The Missing Sister by Lucinda Riley, which is the seventh book in the Seven Sisters series. This is a contemporary series and it follows originally the story of six adopted sisters whose adoptive father dies at the beginning of the series. They are all adopted and when the father dies, he leaves them all a clue to their heritage and where they came from and then every single book in the series follows one of those six sisters whilst she is going to find out where she came from and then also every single book has a historical counterpart to the contemporary story where there is a story that somehow relates to the current life of the sister as well. But then there was this seventh book, The Missing Sister, because apparently there was supposed to be a missing sister because they wanted to have seven sisters, but the adoptive father only found six of them. And then this story is that story of that missing sister. Um, yeah. First of all, very, very sadly, Lucinda Riley died uh, at the beginning of June, I believe, which is very tragic and very horrible, and I'm so sad about that. But still, I have to say that this new book, The Missing Sister, was a huge disappointment. What I was expecting was a book where everything would come together, because throughout the series, there are a lot of questions about the adoptive father, who he was, what his secrets were, how the sisters were chosen to be adopted, how they came together, lots and lots of questions. I thought The Missing Sister was going to be the final book in the series. And even though it is going to be the final book in the series, because of course Lucinda Riley has passed away, it was not meant to be the final book in the series, because this book answers none of your questions. Instead, it is a very dragged out story about this missing sister whom we've never met before this book but somehow we're supposed to be interested in her story as well and i kept waiting i kept waiting for it to make sense and for it to relate to all those questions that i had and this book is so long i had it on my e-reader but this book is like 700 pages long so i thought there's going to be enough time to find out what has happened how it all comes together but then i started to reach the end and i got concerned because nothing was answered yet. It was just the same old premise of this girl slash woman who finds out about her history and then there's again a historical counterpart to it, but nothing was answered. And then I reached the end of the book and I was so, so frustrated. Oh, I hated it. Because the reason like this entire Seven Sisters series, it's very fun and relaxing and perfect to read during the summer. But the reason I still am reading all the books is because I wanted to know the answers to those questions. And this book didn't give them to me. And that is the first thing that disappoints me. The second thing is that all these six sisters are like crammed into this story as well with a tiny new story even though their main story is already finished within their own previous book and it was so long and i just wasn't interested in it and i felt no investment in this story and the only reason i kept up with it was because of the promised answers and they didn't come and now they will never come and this series will probably never be fully finished which is very sad in the end i gave it two out of five stars because i felt like the historical bits was still interesting. That's usually the most interesting part of a Seven Sisters book. But yeah, it was just not enough. It really wasn't enough and uh, I'm very disappointed about it. Really, <laughs> as you can tell, it gave me a lot of not very happy emotions. Next book that I finished in June was A Sky Beyond the Storm by Sabah Tahir, the final book in the Ember in the Ashes book series. So I finished another book series this month. 
very happy with that fact. Like, I'm very, very happy that that happens because I don't really finish a lot of book series. And then Rain the Ashes, I've told like the premise a million times already, but it takes place in this Roman Empire fantasy inspired world where there are marshals who are like the leaders and there are scholars who are oppressed and they are slaves. Leia is a scholar girl who poses as a slave for the resistance. And then there's Elias who is part of Black Cliff and of these elite soldiers, but he really does not want to be he hates the whole system so basically we have two main characters who are very unhappy with where they are and how things are and then from the first book onwards lots and lots of things happen and there's so much adventure and excitement and new characters and things and i loved it the first book in emory the ashes is one of my all-time favorite young adult fantasy books because it's so good and then i've read the rest of the series and now i finally read the final book in the series and Maybe you can already feel it coming, but I was a bit disappointed by it. A Sky Beyond the Storm. <laughs> Let's start with the good bits uh, in order to stay positive. I still thought that a lot of the characters had interesting storylines and I loved that there was quite a bit of action and overall I guess I was sort of satisfied with the ending. But then for the more negative bits, this book was just all over the place. So many things happened and at the same time nothing happened at all. Like... I don't know how this book managed to do that, but it was like there was lots of action, lots of things happening. And at the same time, there was lots and lots of doing nothing and just feeling like it was all a bit pointless. I felt like the book was so, so far removed from the first book, An Ember the Ashes, both in storyline and also in characters. A bit of it is, of course, character development, which I really enjoyed to see. But I also felt like these characters just transformed in into completely different people. And I did not really know if I liked those completely different people. And yeah, at the same time, things felt a bit too easy, a bit too convenient. And it just, I felt like so many things were just there to be obstacles to be overcome immediately. And then again with the ending, even though there were some aspects of it that I was satisfied with, there were also a lot of things that just made me roll my eyes because I felt like it was just in there to make you feel certain emotions and I felt like it really did not do it for me. And of course, I still, like, I did not have a horrible time reading it because there were still amazing moments and definitely with certain characters and I guess certain conversations and certain things. It's hard to say again with like the final book in a series to talk about it without spoilers. But overall, I really felt like A Sky Beyond the Storm lacked the magic that certain feeling of an ember in the ashes and also the second book had that a bit. The third book was already starting to be more removed, as I mentioned before, but this one just, it was everywhere. It was nothing at the same time. It's very weird to explain it. And I'm just a bit sad because this is the second book series in a short amount of time that I did not like the final book of. And mm, yeah, maybe it's just me. Maybe I have changed a bit. Maybe my reading taste has changed because of course, when I read An Ember in the Ashes, I was like 19 years old. It has been ages, like six years. So of course my reading taste is going to change a bit, but I was still disappointed. And I feel like I've been so negative about it. I don't think it's the most horrible book ever. Like there's still, I still really enjoy to see the world. And I really love to have a conclusion, an ending to the story. But because my expectations were so high, it really fell flat for me. So that is very, very sad. And yeah, I, I warned you at the beginning that this was going to be a disappointing reading wrap up. The next book that I finished in June was The Mothers by Britt Bennett. This book tells the story of a girl named Nadia. And when she was 17 years old, she was involved with the son of the local pastor named Luke. As a result of that relationship, Nadia ended up being pregnant at 17 and she had to find a way to solve that problem. There's also Aubrey, who is Nadia's best friend and who is very, very religious. And this book then follows the lives of these three people people, Nadia, Luke and Aubrey, for around 10 years or so. The book is also called The Mothers because the story is kind of being told from the perspective, well not completely, but partly from the perspective of the mothers from the church. The local church is very important in the town where they come from and these are the mothers, like the older women who are very active at the church and they talk about how they noticed what happened and how it happened and what they thought of it. But at the same time it also switches in between perspectives from Nadia, Luke and Aubrey. So that is quite the premise and and this book I picked up because I recently read The Vanishing Half by Bit Bennett, which I absolutely adored. The Vanishing Half was a definite five-star read for me, so that is why 
I was very interested to see Brit Bennett's other book, which was her debut novel, and that is The Mother. So with The Mothers, I have mixed feelings again. So again, to start off with the positive things, I thought the first half of this book was very, very strong and very good. First of all, the writing style is amazing. Like Brit Bennett, she knows how to write and this book is amazingly written and I just love it. And you really feel everything that is going on. Secondly, the themes of this book are very strong. They are about grief, about friendship, about love and relationships. And most importantly, about mothers, all kinds of mothers, absolutely mothers, good mothers, bad mothers, all kinds of things. And I thought it was portrayed so well and it was such a strong message in so many ways and I loved it and I was so invested in the story and with all of these three characters who are all flawed in their own ways. But then the second half of the book, and this is where I have to be a bit more negative again, is I felt like the book completely lost momentum and completely lost what made it so good in the first place. I won't say that the second half is bad. It's not like it became a horrible book all of a sudden, but the second half was just so dragged out and suddenly it felt really slow and it felt like, what are we exactly trying to do here? And from this point onwards, I also started to have trouble understanding the characters and their motivations, I guess. And maybe that is also part of the book. Maybe you're supposed to feel like that. That's completely possible. But it really lost that extremely good quality for me in the second half. And then also there's the matter of one of the most important themes of this book that I don't want to say too much about because I feel like I'm not sure if it's a spoiler or not. You can look it up for yourself and then you can probably find it very easily. But I'm just not going to say what it is explicitly. But I was not completely sure about how this theme, how this topic was handled. I felt like it was a very one-sided way of looking at it. And I felt like this book was kind of having a certain opinion about that. And I'm not sure if the, that was the thing, that the book was going for that. But that is how it made me feel. And at the same time, I've never experienced anything like that. I've never experienced that topic. So I cannot say for sure if it's like badly represented or, you know, it's hard to talk about it. But for me, I wasn't completely sure. I had my doubts about it, especially how it was portrayed again in the second half. So yeah, overall, I ended up giving this book 3.5 out of 5 stars because the first half was just like 5 stars and then the second half was more like three stars and I feel like four stars overall would not have been a proper rating. It's hard. It's very hard. I have very complicated feelings about this book. Would I recommend it? I say it's definitely worth reading because I feel like it is very interesting and I think it really depends on the person whether you're going to enjoy this or not. It definitely has some very good things. So, you know, I would just say pick it up and see for yourself. For me, it was, yeah, a bit mixed. I wasn't as disappointed because my expectations were a lot lower than with like the other books that I talked about. But overall, yeah, okay, yeah, that's what I thought about it. <laughs> then I finished an audiobook and that one was First of the Tudors by Joanna Hickson. This book tells the story of Jasper Tudor, who was the brother of Edmund Tudor and the uncle of uh, Henry Tudor, who was King Henry VII. And his life completely takes place during the War of the Roses and when England was in a very very interesting position when it came to who was ruling it and who was the king because basically two sides, two families were just having a war with each other and were just throwing each other off the throne on and off. It's just, it's a very interesting historical topic. As you know, I love Tudor history. That is why I picked this audiobook. And what I thought of it is that it was fine. It was completely fine. I don't have a lot of strong feelings about it. Uh, what I did enjoy is that it tells the story of Jasper Tudor, who we normally don't hear a lot about. We don't really see a lot of his perspective because he's more like a side character than a main character in The War of the Roses. So it's nice to learn a bit more about his life and his story and to see this historical event from a different perspective. So that was totally fine. But at the same time, I also wasn't blown away by it. I wasn't yeah, it didn't really do anything special for me. What I did not like is that there is a historical marriage between a 13-year-old girl and a much older man, which really happened. That's completely historically true. And she also became pregnant at the age of 13 and gave birth, which is also true. But 
it'll still very uncomfortable to read about. So even though it's true and yeah, you cannot really change things like that if you base your book on real historical figures, it still makes me very uncomfortable because it's a very, you know, not healthy relationship. And then also this book ended at a really weird point in time, like in the middle of the War of the Roses when there was still so much that needed to happen, especially with Jasper personally. So I did not really get that, but at the same time, perfectly fine book, perfectly enjoyable for an audiobook. It is always nice to read something about the Tudors. I'm always a fan of Tudor history. This was completely fine, um, but not anything special or something. Then after all the sort of disappointing reads, I wanted to read something that I knew I would enjoy. So I did a reread of one of my favorite books, which is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gil Honeyman. This book tells the story of a young woman named Eleanor Oliphant, who is quite peculiar. She's a bit different. She's very set in her routines. When you meet her, most people think that she's kind of weird. She always says that she is completely fine, even though it very much turns out that she's quite lonely and she's not really that fine at all. Then one day she meets a new co-worker named Raymond and due to circumstance, they both help this elderly man who became unwell at the side of the road. And this starts a new friendship in Eleanor's life and a new yeah, new developments and things like that. And then throughout the book, we get to know that there's a lot more to Eleanor than we initially perceived. I'm not going to say too much about this book apart from that, apart from the premise, because I've talked about it so, so many times. I love this book. I love the story, the writing style. I love Eleanor. I love everything about it. There's a reason that this is, I think, the fourth time that I've read this book. And that is just simply because it's one of my favorites. This story hooks me every time. It's just oh, so, so good. I will always recommend it to everybody. It is beautiful. And I don't have a whole lot to say about it apart from that, because I feel I've done a review for this book so many times before. And I can just say, I really, really, really love it. Then the final book that I finished in June is actually a Dutch non-fiction book. And it is called Op Je Life Geschreven by Myra Louise, which would translate as written on your body, which sort of means like, this is meant for you. This is for you, except that it's like a pun on your body because it's a body positive book. Yeah, this book is basically that it's all about body positivity, about loving yourself, not just your body, but just yourself as a person. And also about mental health and social media, how it can affect that and how your environment is very important when it comes to how you perceive your own body, how certain things can be very toxic and not good for you. It's all about body positivity. And then throughout, there are also a lot of interviews with other Dutch influencers who have a certain affinity with body positivity or like body image. And because of that, this book tells you a whole lot of stories about how you can deal with these insecurities and how it's very hard when you you know, feel insecure about your body and you're not always happy with what you see in the mirror. And I really, really enjoyed this book. I thought this book is such an important read and I feel like everybody should read it just to understand it a little bit more how it is when you don't feel comfortable in your own body. I think it says a lot of important things and it gives you a lot of important information about that. And overall, this book is just, it was so nice to me. I felt like this book was just coming to me saying, it's all right, I got you, you're okay. And it just, oh, it made me feel really, really nice. And when a book can do that, I think it's a very good body positive book. And I also really like to see all these stories of all the different people, which really gives you a whole different perspective on a lot of things because you can see so many different experiences and how basically none, none of the experiences are wrong. Like there are so many ways how you can come to your conclusion, how you can come to this story. And I really enjoyed that. Uh, the only thing I will say is that at some point this book felt a bit repetitive because the same thing was being said over and over again, which I guess is important because messages like these have to be said over and over again. But in book form at some point I felt like yeah, I know what you are saying. And that's the only critique that I have. But overall, I really enjoyed this book and I gave it four out of five stars. And even though it's in Dutch and not everybody can read it, at least not everybody who is watching my videos, I would still recommend it if you are Dutch. Um, it's a very good one. And we've come to the end of my June reading wrap up. I feel like I've been ranting a lot, but I just had a lot of thoughts 
on these books and I needed to express them, which is of course, you know, why it's very nice to have a booktube channel because I can express them here. And I'm sure that July will be a much better reading month because I'm now on summer break and I have so much reading time and I cannot wait. It's going to be amazing. I'm so much looking forward to all the amazing books I'm going to read. But yeah, this was it for my June wrap up. And if you enjoyed it, then maybe go subscribe. I will upload new bookish content every week. Or you can give this video a like and you can leave a comment and tell me about the books that you have read this month. As always, I would really appreciate all the support and thank you so much for that. And until then, uh, hopefully I will see you again very soon in my next video. And um, yeah, bye.